Hey, what's up guys? Uh, well, thank you for tuning in to another uh, video build here. So this is going to be a uh, one of four um, helmet builds that we are doing a, a custom paint job for. Uh, so this is for a good friend of mine and he wanted um, some Boston sports teams themed colored uh, helmets. Uh, yes, he is from Baston. Uh, so if you like the Red Sox or the Celtics or the New England Patriots or what's the, the Bruins if you like any of them I will have a video for each one of these helmets we're doing one at a time um, basically what we're doing is uh, like I said this is one of four um, we are doing the uh, War Machine Mark II Iron Patriot ish uh, layout um, I'm not going with the traditional Iron Patriot one just because there's a lot of intricacy uh, in the head. So what I'm going to actually end up doing is adding some pinstriping. Um, these helmets are being done for free, so I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to spend too much time, but I'm trying to, uh, you know, still make them look cool. So I'm going to add some pinstriping and do some cool stuff like that. But essentially, I wanted to do the New England Patriots helmet in the Iron Patriot helmet. And, you know, basically this is the same layout. Uh, it just, the traditional Iron Patriot helmet kind of, there's a, a line that goes here and there's some but we're gonna again we're gonna do our own I'll, I'll say in a lot of my videos when you do these prints they should be your own vision your own uh creation your own rendition and that's exactly what this is so it's a uh iron patriot themed helmet but it's actually the the, the war machine helmet um for that this video primarily because i like to do different things with each video uh, i'm gonna focus strictly on using glazing putty um, I've talked about it a lot I haven't really dug too deep into the application in this into the sanding what you should use what you shouldn't use how you should apply it so this is what this video is focused on so if you're looking to get really really smooth prints this is going to show you how to do that using glazing putty again I'll reiterate I don't I don't use filler primer as a crutch. It's a great tool. It's an essential step in the process, but I see way too many people using it improperly and you're wasting time and you're wasting money. Some people are gonna stick with that. What some people like to do is, is they like to sand you know, this down as much as you possibly can and it just takes a lot longer and you take away from the overall aesthetics. You're rounding a lot of these edges off that don't need it and not so much in this design, but if you get in and start sanding this, you're going to lose, I mean, you're going to lose definition. There's certain areas in this helmet, you know, there's a harsh line here, there's a harsh line that goes all the way down. You sand that too much, you're going to lose that definition. I mean, there's a line that goes all the way around this helmet. So this video is going to focus on smoothing your prints and not losing any, um, I guess, characterization or attributes to your print, to your helmet. So um, glazing putty is a great, great, great option for that because it's very light. It fills in minor imperfections. You don't need to hit it with 180, 220, anything like that. Uh, you don't need anything super, super heavy. Um, you know, a lot of times I like to hit it just with 320 and it's great. So that's what this video is gonna focus on. Um, this helmet is just basically hot glued together. Um, so really the first step and what we want to do and I'll move a little bit closer with any of your prints is you want to kind of go through and inspect it and obviously we have some areas here where there were supports uh, and there were some other things I'm not sure if this was a clog or an over extrusion or what was going on there but with all prints you want to inspect it first and you do want to do some form of of light sanding just to get rid of those so this helmet does have a few um, just minor blemishes here and there uh, on the head here we've got uh, some nibbles or like I said I'm not sure what that is uh, but there is some 
very light sanding we want to do. Uh, I actually was printing this and we lost power, so I've actually got a line here uh, that I'm going to have to kind of just bevel out before I put the uh, glazing putty on. And then here, uh, my filament, I had to change it, so um, there was a line there too. Uh, when the new filament came out, um, there are just two different types of filament and that can happen. So I don't really worry about that stuff too much because I do a good amount of sanding. If you've watched any of my videos in the past, you're probably like, holy cow, um, you're way too OCD. That's just how I am. But um, we're going to make this helmet look great. Overall, from an inspection standpoint, and don't really worry about this gap. This is just hot glued together, so the glue kind of separated. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you guys... Uh, how to how to get this all glued together but essentially um this is a pretty good print we've got your typical z banding i'm only using a 0.4 nozzle um my infill uh settings were i think i only had a 0.8 millimeter uh shell and there was only two layers on the wall um i do that strictly because i know i'm going to sand these and smooth these out and paint these um obviously that's a print setting that if you're if you were doing this like a raw print you'd want to have probably a, a, a one millimeter and at least three walls um so you know as far as the print goes i don't i personally don't focus on getting the print perfect perfect because i know i'm going to do sanding and filling and, and refining and things like that um things like z banding and stuff like that uh it is going to happen um obviously if you fine tune your printer you can get rid of that i just don't worry about it too much so but from a standpoint it's a pretty clean print that um it's a good candidate for what we're using it for you know what i mean uh, as a standalone, whenever, you know, just a tip, if you're getting into, you know, printing this, if you were trying to do it for the colors, and I just did this for fun, but if you're doing it for the colors, one big thing is you always want to have the, um, the panel or the, uh, the, yeah, I guess you could say the panels of these printing in the same direction, because you can see how these all change different directions. So it, it really can be tough to, to get these done. You can even see here how this was printed more in a vertical and these were printed more on the side. So everything kind of changes. Um, you know, I say when you do a raw print, I mean, it's tough to do raw prints and have them look perfect. Um, they're going to need some sort of touching up. So, but this helmet though is overall a good candidate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take this apart. Um, I am going to do this piece by piece. I'm not going to do this as one solid piece. Um, these are all individual little pieces, which will actually make sanding and everything a lot easier and actually, um, result in a much better, uh, looking piece when it's all finished. So I'm going to take this apart here and, uh, just do some touch-ups on the sanding some of these areas where there's like i said some things from support and some some nibble i don't i don't know what you call these nibs or something i don't know but we're gonna just get all these knocked down i'm just gonna hit it real quick with 320 and then start showing you guys the process to applying glaze and putty so let's get this guy apart here and let's get started all right so this is where i started the sanding process most of the pieces were hit with 220 and 320. Some of them were hit with 180 and 220. But after I scuffed them down and kind of knocked down some of the lines a little bit, I went right into applying a glazing putty. It's not rocket science here. You're just basically going to take a plastic spreader, even an index card or something like that, apply it on, let it dry, and then start sanding. All right, uh, so just showing you some of the uh, results here before I get too far ahead of myself. Um, so if sanded a decent amount here um the best thing about this method is it's quick this stuff just comes right off it it, it dusts right off and uh you don't have to get super super aggressive you can use a heavier sandpaper if you want but you want to be careful like i said when you're dealing with certain prints and lines you don't want to get too aggressive and a lot of times that is what can happen when you're sanding these is you know you may not pay attention and then start to round this off if you're a lot of people try to knock these down with a heavier grit uh 80 or 100 or 160 um uh, you know you can do 180 um you just have to be careful um what i basically did is i used my little uh, gator sanding stick here and i put 220 on there and then I followed up with uh, some 400. And it took me, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to do this. It did not take long at all. Uh, it filled in exactly what I needed it to do. And then where it kind of ate through the filler, it smoothed all this up. So now if you feel it, it's, there's a little bit of rigidness there, and that's going to happen. 
um, but that's what we use the filler primer for. So you could, in theory, add another layer of glaze to this, um, and sometimes you have to go back and do that, but I'm confident that when you do a good print and you give this a good sand, smooth it out, and then do, say, two coats of filler primer and then sand, you're ready for etching primer and it's, it's, it's pretty smooth. So we're going to test that theory though. So we're going to get some filler primer on these and see how they look before we finish all these, just so we know exactly what uh, process to do. So I'm just going to spray a couple of these and see how they look. All right, so a little update here. Uh, basically, what we did is we applied the glaze and putty to all these parts. Well, we did a light sand, just basically to scuff it. Uh, applied the glaze and putty and uh, did a 220 and a 320 sand um, to get the glaze and putty off. Applied two coats of filler primer. And these parts have not been sanded yet. Um, some of these have. And I'll kind of show you. So this was just a very uh, light sanding here, basically with 320. Uh, and this piece is just kind of taped together, so it's kind of it's kind of jonky, if that's a word. But uh, it's pretty smooth. Um, there's definitely some more sanding that needs to be done. Um, tell there's still some light lines in here, so this is going to need. Um, another round of sanding. It's pretty smooth though, just for what we've done so far. So what I'll do with this is basically, um, I'm going to test it with 320, but I'll, part of me wants to go to 400. So I'll see, make sure 320 doesn't strip too much of this off. That's really the key here is when you do these layers and you do the sandings, you want to go up in grit uh, every time. Um, if you stay at the same grit, you're just going to strip off what work you've done. So that's why, I mean, some of these are, some of these imperfections here are kind of deep. Um, so I'll probably try 400 just to make sure it's smoothing it out. But then some of these deep ones, I'm going to have to kind of level down with uh, 320 and then go back over them. But, um, so that one, it's pretty smooth. Let's kind of put that up there. These ones are nice and smooth. These are really easy because they're a flat piece. So you can see they're pretty, there's a couple dips there. Like I said, this is really only, um, this was just, you know, scuff sand, glazing putty, uh, 220, 320, two layers of filler primer. Um, and then this is just regular primer that I put over it just to kind of see, it's just a sandable primer. I just kind of going to sand it off. So um, you can see some dips and some stuff here. But like I said, I'll more than likely go to, um, 400 grit to kind of level these down going up on grit these came out really good these are pretty smooth so this is only after a couple a couple rounds so you got some trash stuck in there gotta sand that out got a little bubble there but these are really smooth these are looking pretty good so these will definitely be ready for what i'll do with these is like these ones i'll do 400 and then i'll do um one more layer of filler, filler primer just for good measure and then do 600 and then it'll be ready for etching primer um this got some trash on it too so i gotta sand that off but same thing with this one it's got some little imperfections here for the most part and like i said stuff like that this this textured look uh this will all go away when you put paint on it paint has much better filling capacity um then primer um so these will all look really good this one's got a little bit of trash in it but for the most part and i'm going to clean up all these edges here too because these look like garbage i'll probably just take some wood filler or something i'll sand these and then just throw body filler or wood filler on there but all these are looking really good so um i really haven't put a ton of time um into uh into these so far uh, i've been pretty slim with work lately um but all these are good um as far as these pieces go i guess i could grab this one and kind of show you this is um really with no sanding this was just the glazing putty and then two layers of filler primer 
before, so I haven't even really um, sanded this one yet. And this one looks really good. There's obviously some imperfections in there. You can tell this one hasn't been really sanded yet, so this will need some work. But um, overall, they're looking pretty good. Like I said, you've got to repeat that process a couple times, but that don't sleep on that glazing putty. It it'll easily save you three or four rounds of doing filler primer and then sanding. Filler primer is great, but it's not. Don't go straight to it. You know, use that glazing putty. And then use the filler primer for the very, very minor, minor imperfections here. So this one, ultimately, I'll sand this one with 320. Uh, hit it with probably two more coats of filler primer and then 400. One more coat of filler primer and then 600. And it should be good to go because we just have some really, really minor blemishes up top here. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start sanding these with some 400 grit. Get another coat or two or filler primer on and then move to 600 and then these things should be ready for paint pretty soon so we'll let these dry here make sure we get all this trash and everything out of there if it's been freaking windy here so even with in my shed i leave the door open and crap blows in so that's why i don't i only primer in here i don't paint in here so um but yeah we'll get all these uh dried here and then we'll start sanding them and hopefully get some paint on these pretty soon All right, so here is a little bit of an update on the helmet. Uh, I'm actually going to put it down here next to uh, Captain Rex. Um, so basically, what I've done, we took the whole helmet. We, the, the pieces I should say, now it's a helmet. Uh, I did 180, 220, applied glazing putty sanded with 220 and 320 applied two coats of filler primer let it sit for about an hour or two okay sanded it with 320 applied two coats of filler primer again sanded it with 400 and 600 and this is where we're at so the majority of the lines are gone there are still a few dips there that I'll go back to 220 and then 320 and, and, and fill in, basically. But what I've done here, so I put this helmet together. It's just taped together, so it's, it's not a perfect fit, but it gives you a general idea. You can see this is sinking in here a little bit of how the helmet is going to fit. What I have done is I've just taken a marker, and I've marked all the areas that I can see the edges need work, okay? I haven't really touched the edges much, okay? A little bit here and there, no, nothing crazy. The reason why I tape it together, and, and this helmet's a little bit different, is because it's not like this helmet here where it's just three pieces. This is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's like 12 pieces or 13 pieces or something like that. Um, each piece is printed individually and then put together. So you'll get, depending on how it's printed, you'll get, you know, kind of choppy, edges and you'll get stuff like this on this side you can see it you know you don't know what's going to be hidden and what's not so i put it together i tape it together to see how much room i have in this edge now what i'm going to do is just put a little bit of body filler on and again i don't want to use putty because some of these are a little bit deeper um, i'm going to sand them with 180 and 220 and then basically see how they look but some of these things are deeper and are going to need uh filling like right here um, that's too, I don't know if you can see that, that's too deep for putty. That The putty, it's, it's just not dense enough to work. So that's going to need some filler. Um, same thing with these. These are too deep for putty. If you put putty on the second you start sanding it, it's going to come off with the sandpaper. So some areas are going to need body filler. Some areas may just need some putty. But I want to go through all my edges and make them clean so that way they line up nice and easy and this helmet comes together. So don't be afraid to, to mark, you know, on, on a helmet where it needs work because you're going to end up repriming this anyways and it doesn't matter. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take this whole thing apart here, start sanding all these edges, put filler where I need filler, put putty where I need putty. I'll show you guys how it looks and then we'll get the last coat of primer on this puppy and get her going. 
So here's an up close look at how some of those edges can be worn down. Uh, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned how you have to be careful on edges. Well, even when you're careful, this can happen. So inevitably what I had to do is go back and put body filler on all these edges and fill them in and kind of re-sand them and smooth them out. That way they look symmetrical and uniform. It's really easy for this to happen with multi-piece helmets. So you always want to put your helmet back together, see if there's gaps or anything and fill them in properly with body filler. I'll show you is we've just gone through and scuffed down these ends and smoothed all these off. Uh, these pieces are all good. Um, some of these needed it. Uh, if you remember in the picture there how some of these ends didn't line up too good. And basically what we did is I scuffed this down. Uh, we were using some Bondo body filler. I got some back up here. Wasn't sure if I always need it, but wasn't sure if I was going to need it. This stuff's kind of old, but um, it still works. So, yeah, basically went through, scuffed all these edges uh, that needed filling, put the body filler on, and now what we'll do is we will do a layer of filler primer. Two two coats actually. Sorry. So basically, we'll we'll spray it once, just a thorough spray, not overloading it. I'll let it sit for about 20 minutes do a second coat and then we'll let it sit for an hour and then we will uh, sand it down with some 400 and some 600 so all of these parts here are done um, I don't know if you can see how smooth they are but these are these are done these are good so you can see there's still gonna be some light sanding marks but this is basically ready for just a final etching primer and off to paint we go. Same thing with all these, I did the same process here. This one had, um, you can see some body filler there. I had an edge here I had to just make look a little bit better. Uh, all these are good to go. All the edges are good. You can see some of them got filled just to make them look better. Um, over here I had this edge to fill in. And I literally just finished this here. This still needs a couple areas of body filler. You can see those craters there, so I'm going to get that on there. Everything else is ready for paint, though. Well, primer and then paint. So, basically, what I'm going to do with all of these here is apply the last, very last layer of primer. Um, these are, let me see if I can walk outside. My yard's trash, don't judge me. I don't know if you can see how smooth these are, but they are smooth. So, um, you know, this is the first helmet I've done in multiple pieces. It's not bad, it's different. I think it's more work because you end up rounding off all these edges. I mean, you can see all the stuff I had to do all on these edges here. So it was a lot of work. Um, is it any faster? Yeah. I don't know, that was a weird noise I just made. <laughs> I don't know if it's faster. Um, it's maybe a little bit less stressful because you can segment it um, and really focus on getting these things crisp. So as long as when you glue it together, everything lines up good, you know, you're, uh, you're good to go. Um, but yeah, all these pieces look pretty good. This piece here was one solid piece. I got this all sanded down, nice and smooth. Uh, these are two pieces here. These came out pretty smooth. Said, I uh, got all these very smooth. This still needs a final sand and a final coat of primer, but these are all the pieces here that you see. So we're gonna um, the ones that are sanded here. I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna put the final coat of primer, and then these ones here. I'm gonna do a uh, quick sand and then primer them, and they'll be good to go as well. So uh, we'll be slaying some paint on these shortly so once these are all painted I'll give you a look at the helmet and uh, we'll get ready for paint. This top part here I had to go uh, put some body filler on because where the print had stopped there was a very abrupt line and then it dipped down so what I've done is I've already done one layer of uh, body filler and then this is just a second one just because there were some dips and some craters that were a little bit too deep for uh, spot putty so i'll hit that with 180 220 320 400 and it should be good to go
the rest of it's very smooth. This piece will be done after this. So get these all sanded down, set up, and see how they look. All right, I'm going to save you guys the music lapse and actually explain what I'm doing and why. So after the whole helmet was uh, put back together and I made sure all the gaps were gone, filled in properly, and it looked uniform, I always like to do a final coat of etching primer. Now, despite what other people say that etching primer can only be used on metal, that's completely false. It creates great adhesion for things like plastic and fiberglass, so you can definitely use it on anything. The great thing about etching primer is it lays so smooth. So for a final coat, it's absolutely perfect, and that's why I always do it. It fills in minor gaps, lays really easy, and you can sand it off if you do find any blemishes that you need to fix before paint. So that's basically what I'm doing here. It's just a really light coat. It fills everything in. It makes it nice and smooth and super easy to paint. And again, it's going to increase adhesion for the paint to the primer parts. So I always like to do that last. Some people like to use etching primer as their first layer. However, if you're using a glazing putty or body filler on top of it, it can create adhesion problems between the two. So because of this, I typically avoid that. All right, guys, so uh, here we are at the, uh, at the painting process. So uh, basically we've gone through and kind of test fitted everything uh, for the helmet and made sure everything uh, fits good. Uh, looks good. It's nice and smooth and we're basically going to start painting. So um, all the pieces are, are very smooth um, They all look really good. I did a test fit. I still got some uh, Some duct tape. I gotta I gotta peel off But what I'm gonna start doing here is sectioning out the pieces that need to get painted with the specific pieces um, so uh, we are basically um, doing uh, again, this is New England Patriots. So we're gonna be using a rust-oleum uh, metallic silver and then we're going to be using the rust-oleum for the blue. I went with more of a navy blue. And then the red is the patriotic red, which is kind of the same color as my beat-up dumbbell there. But it's over in that box. So I'll show you before I start painting. But um, I've got a cool little color scheme. So I do have two pieces that do need a little bit more work. Um, this piece... Uh, there was just a dip and it was driving me crazy. So I have to filler primer this and then etching primer it. And then this has that little dip right there, which we got to get rid of. So I got to, this is going to need a little bit more work, but it's never a bad thing to paint the parts that are ready to get painted. Um, just because then the paint has, you know, more adequate time to dry and fully cure. So I'm basically just getting set up here. So I'm going to get everything set up, get some drop cloth set up and then start painting. All right, guys, well, that's it. That is a wrap on part one of the, what are we going to call this helmet? The Iron War Patriot, I guess we could call it. Uh, but this video showed you how to utilize glazing putty, how to help get those uh, prints nice and smooth. Hopefully there were some tips and tricks in there that will help you with your builds. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click that subscribe button because I'm going to have a lot, a lot more fun things for you in the future. Make sure you check back for part two of this video as we will be showing you or I will be showing you how to properly paint your 3D prints, um, how to apply clear coat, how to get rid of blemishes before clear coat, how to wet sand, how to polish. Uh, if you're doing a multi-piece print, how to merge it together, how to install LED eyes, and of course the final product. Um, so make sure you check back for that part two. Uh, it should be up in a couple weeks because I don't quite have the helmet 100% yet, but it's pretty close. So make sure you check back for that because before you know it, you will be getting a glimpse of this. So again, make sure you check back for that part two because that's going to be an awesome video. It's going to have loads of content, a lot of helpful tips to help you get your uh, 3D prints uh, painted and looking glossy, look refined, look like it just... Rolled off the showroom floor, even if it doesn't have wheels, it'll it'll look like that. So, but seriously, guys, uh, any questions in the video here? Uh, anything that I did today that you have questions on? Leave me a comment. I'll be sure to reply. I try to reply to all my subscribers. Any questions you guys have? Uh, any comments? Feedback? Uh, I, I'm always 
open to criticism and other things. If the music's too loud, if the picture's off, whatever, just let me know so I don't do it next time. But again, if you're a subscriber, thanks. If you're not, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for more videos. Hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos come up. And that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, I'm going to wrap this thing up. Uh, I'm going to start doing some more work here. And next time you see me, we'll be having the Iron War Patriot or whatever you want to call it ready for presentation. So we'll see you.